Hello, everyone. I am so excited. I've got Babsy Sock with us for this episode of Plug Into Devon. She is a national delegate to the Democratic National Convention, which is very exciting. She's also an outdoor enthusiast living in Moab. And for the last uh, 60 days, as the uh, COVID-19 pandemic has spread around the world and devastated the Navajo community, Babs has been working diligently to help uh, coordinate relief efforts uh, on uh, the Navajo Nation. So you don't want to miss this episode. Babs, welcome to the show. Hi, Devin. Nice to be here. It's a thrill to have you. Thank you very much for joining us. So what do you want to talk about today? I want to talk about the infrastructure and water on the Diné uh, Navajo Nation and um, the efforts to uh, solve some of the water problems. It's a big undertaking that the nation's looking to, to uh, dive into with their care funding. And they're going to need some help from outside allies like ourselves. Yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you understand is the problem with uh, access to water in the Navajo Nation. Um, as you know, uh, about 30 to 40 percent of indigenous uh, members uh, do not have access to water, running water. So that's part of the funding drives that we had been creating last couple of weeks of bringing uh, water, PPE, sanitizer, and whatnot. Um, also, there's, there's a big long history of, of mineral and coal and um, outside corporations coming in to uh, extract those types of materials and a lot of the water ended up getting diverted for those types of projects and not used for indigenous members and we want to see that change. Yeah that's scary to think that uh, we've been using their drinking water to uh, extract uh, coal gas and oil. Uh, yeah very sad. So uh, Babs, you mentioned that the Navajo Nation received about $600 million in CARES Act funding and that uh, at least part of that can be used now to provide uh, water infrastructure. Uh, do you think that'll be enough? It is not going to be enough, for sure, because there's also other issues that need to be addressed um, in this covert issues that are happening here. Um, so they're gonna need some outside help, outside activism, uh, reaching out to Congress, putting someone like you in Congress to help shift and change and mold things that are happening uh, down here in the Four Corners um, to help make a difference and reaching out to members of other states, other folks on appropriate committees and helping apply for an extension because there's some uh, strings tied to this funding that it has to be spent before December 30th and what spent looks like is up for interpretation and they have their attorney generals and other legal counsel helping them to um, interpret that but to have some outside help from Congress to be able to make sure that things are redefined so it is very clear that they will be able to utilize all those funds plus have access to more to really solve this water crisis. Yeah, the, the infrastructure projects can't be completed overnight, but they are at the root of the COVID-19 problem, aren't they? Yep, and not just COVID-19, but they certainly are for sure. And it's been a root of a problem. And now with COVID-19, it is shining a light on uh, those types of problems and many more, of course. Yeah. If you don't have access to running water, you can't uh, casually use the water you collect, however you collect it, whether it's driving to a grocery store or schlepping down to a stream or whatever. You can't use that precious water for crazy things like washing, bathing, and cleaning nearly so casually as if you could just turn a spigot, right? So Exactly. Uh, so they're deciding between drinking water, washing, appropriately washing. You know, that 20 seconds that we're hearing that we have the privilege of being able to do when we have access. And not just that, I know it became extremely obvious when you guys went down there last weekend about the um, 
uh, issues on the San Juan with the Superfund project that happened. Well, actually, it wasn't even labeled a Superfund project, but after coming out on the Animus into the San Juan from um, a big mining project that happened there in Colorado that a lot of responsibility in the cleanup hasn't really even been addressed to its fullest because there's still yeah. contaminated water coming downstream or coming from upstream downstream to the nation. Yeah, yeah, the water you pull out of the river isn't safe to drink that when you pull it out and it needs to be treated and cleaned and oh my gosh. Well, Babs, uh, you've been really a great ally to the community for, and we really appreciate that. Tell us, what is your superpower? My superpower, probably my voice. I grew up in a large family of eight. I was the baby girl, um, and I was not heard a lot. And um, I've heard of other family members and other people in large families that said that they had to like eat their food with their arm wrapped around their plate. Um, and for me, I'd be waiting to inject into a conversation. And then um, my running joke from my friend who uh, was uh, hoarding his food when he was growing up is that once he started eating, he didn't stop eating as a child because I think he had to needed some help as a premature baby. And for me, I think it's once I started talking, I didn't stop talking. And I've been <laughs> a good vocal advocate for issues wherever I see them. Oh, that's great. I'm glad you're passionate, Babs. Uh, Babs, before you go, and we are grateful that you've come today, take a minute and tell people how they can learn more about you and connect with you. Oh, okay. Um, I'm here down in Moab. I'm an outdoor enthusiast. I'm also a delegate to the National Convention. You can find me on Facebook, um, B-A-B-S-I-S-A-K, at, um, I'm on Facebook. You can reach out to me by phone, 801-867-9051. Um, or email B-A-B-S-I-S-A-K at gmail.com. Um, I'm looking forward to this campaign season, helping you get elected and also to be addressing all the issues that are happening here in CD3 in Utah, because as a Democratic um, delegate to the National Convention. I will be representing all of 3D CD3, which as we know, extends all the way up to the Wasatch Front into wow. the Greater Salt Lake City area. Fantastic. Well, Babs, thank you very much for your time today. We wish you every success in your efforts to help the Navajo people. Thank you. All righty. Let's be bold together. You got it. I'm Devin Thorpe. For the last eight years, I've been working full-time to eradicate extreme poverty, improve global health, and fight climate change. I've concluded that the best way for me to continue my work is to run for Congress to represent the people of Utah's third district. In Utah, we have common shared values. Those things unite us. I believe passionately in our ability to come together, and I believe that working together, we can solve Utah's problems. I'm Devin Thorpe. I'm a Democrat. I'm running to represent the people of Utah's third district. I'm Devin Thorpe, a candidate for Congress, and I approve this message.